Good everyone, I'm today's video and today we have a updated premium review on the KI45 High slash Thai. This is a Chinese premium which some people still don't like this thing to this day, I'm looking at you hairy feet. And I can obviously understand why people don't like this thing, but I think people need to give it a second chance. So what has changed since I reviewed this vehicle? Well, the 37mm has gained a rate of fire buff, and the battle rating has been reduced from 3.3 to 2.3. Now, don't take that as a negative. It shouldn't have been at 3.3 anyway. So, when all the Kai 45s got moved down, this followed suit. So, the aircraft has not changed performance-wise. It's not changed um, in its control ability-wise. The shroud cannons have not changed either, so don't worry about that. Um, but nothing much has really changed in terms of the aircraft. It's mainly the 37mm has gotten a bit of a buff, and the battle rating has been reduced. So now that it's at 2.3, what do I think of it? Well, I think it's very good. It's It was okay at 3.3, like it did have its problems. Obviously, fighting meta stuff like F4s, Yak-3s, it would really, really struggle. But now that it's at a battle rating of 2.3, this thing can really do some work. So, let's go into why. So starting off with the guns, we do have a 37mm HO203 cannon with 15 shots, which has an incredible fire rate of 37mm of 300 rounds per minute, which is pretty dang good, let's put it that way. We also have access to a HO3 cannon down here with 100 shots, which is perfectly fine. Obviously the 37 will run out first, then it'll be this. We also have access to two 20mm HO5 cannons with 100 rounds each. These are mounted slightly upwards of the cockpit, as you can tell. These are mounted in a Shrag Musique. I'm not going to attempt to say it properly, but that's just how I say it, because I don't know how to say it. No doubt Bertie's going to correct me in the comments. He's one of my German subs, so he's pretty helpful to like correct on anything. And then back here, you have your back gunner and a 7.92 Type 18 machine gun, which is basically a copy of the MG-15. Overall, the armament isn't too bad, although when you lose the 37, you're down to just one cannon, which, I mean, it's better than nothing, but sometimes it can be a bit of a detriment. Because obviously not having any light machine guns to like help against ground targets really does hurt this thing's versatility quite a lot. And obviously because most of the Kai-45s in-game don't actually have their bomb racks added, because this one did have them, they're still limited in that regard, so you can't really use this thing in tank forces. So the price of this vehicle is 1150 Golden Eagles. Do I think it's worth it? The answer is, as a maybe. This really depends on your playstyle. If you like something that's a bit more unique and a bit of a twin-engine heavy fighter and an, and an interceptor, this will be right up your street. If you're more of someone who prefers a good dogfight, there's another premium that I'm going to point out to you. And that is, if we go to aviation, the A6M2. It's around 150 Golden Eagles more, so about a quid more. But if you're more of a dogfighter sort of person, this thing will definitely take the cake in that regard. It also does come with a couple of Japanese fart bombs, which are 60 kilogram bombs. But otherwise... It's not exactly, like, the, the bombs aren't the selling point of the Zero, I'd just like to point that out. If you want something that's cheap for CAS, take the H81. You get 250 cows, a 500 pounder, and a decent bird. But this is more of a niche aircraft, which is why I kind of liked it when it came out. And not a lot of people did. Obviously, this aircraft is quite rare to see in the skies of War Thunder, which is quite unfortunate. But in, a, in good hands, this thing can do some work. So to quickly cover the belts, the left-hand cannon, I believe, is the Ho-5, if memory serves me correctly. In fact, no, this is the Ho-3, I could tell by the belts. So this is the Ho-3 cannon. I recommend using HE or well, the Universal Belt, because it has a good mix of everything. This is the Ho-5, so it's a little bit lower muzzle velocity-wise, but obviously you do get a higher fire rate. Again, stick with Uni. These will do the job fine. And then the turret in the back, I recommend APT. The 37mm does not come with belts, so you don't need to be concerned about that. And as I said, even though there's a big fat red button in the cockpit that literally is the bomb release, it doesn't have any bombs, which is quite unfortunate. 
But as I said, I do think this is a good aircraft worth picking up if you're more of a interceptor sort of player, which there is players like that. Um, and as you can see, this thing can even do some work as a dogfighter if necessary. I'm going to hand you over to the gameplay now. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the Kai 45 high size tie as part of the Chinese tech tree. And I'll see you all on the next one. Well, hello there, Mr. AR2. <coughs> And a nice cleanup on IO4 we could probably do after. Right, wait, are you ready for some bomber intercepting, buddy? And there's a B-18A behind that. Critical hit, I think we blew most of the tail off. Could have probably used the shrug music. Or the Shrog there, but whatever. Boom! See, even though I didn't get like an immediate kill with the 37 millimeter, it it really does do some very nice damage. Looks like my teammates have the same idea as me. I'm gonna make my move towards the Yak 2. Looks like the SBD is also a team killer, which is wonderful. As if we need more of them these days. Is he gonna ram it? Nope. That's okay. I'm gonna pitch for the IL-4, but I reckon I'll have to go for the B-18 now. Which I really don't want to do, but I might not have a choice. Hello, Mr. Little Sven. How are you doing today? Yeah, you're not doing too well now, are you? See what I mean? Like, these, these guns can clap. They're not as good as they used to be, but... Well, like, they're a little bit better than what they used to be, is what I meant to say, but, like, um... They're still not 100%. Let's put it that way. Got a BF-109E7 coming in here. I want to get some speed up. I'm not going to be able to dogfight this guy, but I will certainly give it a try. This thing does maneuver quite well, but it won't outturn a BF-109. It'll certainly do some work. I'm going to try and hold him off until the SPD gets here. Got some hits with the Shrog. See, if you've got a keybind set for the Shrog, it is quite useful to like shuffle between the Shrog and obviously your main guns. If you don't know how to set it up, it's in the um, it's in the keybinds. Pretty useful little feature. Got a crit right wing. Can't quite put the foot around just yet. And teammate got it. Perfect. See what I mean? This this thing can do some work. It really can. We ain't got much left in terms of the 20 mil anyway. We've got one shot of the 37 left, and then we've got 126 rounds of the shrug. And before anyone asks, I've only gotten... I think two kills with the shrug? On this plane? One was on a bomber, and one was on an AFK MiG. So, it's not exactly stellar in terms of kills, but... You can occasionally have gimmick moments with the shrug. Which is quite useful. Right. Is he going to pitch for us? No, I don't think so. So I'm going to ignore him and I'm going to go for the J22. Hold on tight, way. The wings are flapping. Missed my shot, but that's okay. The 20 mil can finish him up. Perfect. There's a diesel locomotive we can disable over there. I might as well take it out so my teammate can bomb it or something. Plus, they may need points more than me. I'd rather not let the train get away. There we go. I'll leave that for the team now. So we've got that guy over there who's RTB. We've got this lag 3 and another lag 3. It's like the lag three respading pandemic is on or something. I, I, I don't know. Like, do they need respading? I don't, I don't think they do. 
lag threes aren't that great, so. But there's the the 66, which is arguably the best one, and that's the predecessor for the LA5. Uh, that one is going in. I'll take the assist though. For that short burst. So we've got two guys left, and then we can consider this a win. Now I know Harry's probably going to be in the comments of this video saying, don't buy this thing, it's a pile of trash, you need low ping. It's better now. I've tried this thing on about 120. It's still shaky with its performance and that's a black hit um, but it's not as bad as it used to be it used to be a lot worse I think to be honest Gaijin just hates Harry so I wouldn't be surprised if um, if he's getting bad luck because Gaijin don't like him so it turns out the legs three that we saw earlier didn't make it back the base. That is okay. We're gonna go and finish up these railway cars. Now we don't have a lot of ammunition for them, but we do obviously have the back gunner as well. Probably the best angle of approach here is gonna be from the side. But obviously the SVD is coming in to help out now. Could actually try to shrug, but I don't think it's going to work. I watch out way for him. I'm not bothered if I don't get many. It's just I want the teammates to benefit from it. All right, we just got our TB. <coughs> Plus, our engines are leaking oil anyway, and the Kai 45 doesn't like flying with. Damaged engines anyway. It can it can fly on one engine, but not very well. So you've got to be really careful of that. Upilu with 1.02. I'm guessing that's a Swedish bomber. But obviously, I'd rather the teammates get the ground targets, not me, because obviously they may need it. I don't. Because well, I've already got the mark of distinction unlocked on this aircraft a long time ago. But yeah, this, this thing can do, certainly do some work, and in fact, we're going to try and use the Shrug here. These bots do not count as player kills in my opinion, but Gaijin makes it so they do. There we go. Let's see if we can get this one with a Shrug. That's what I mean, like, even though the Shrug isn't that useful, we're getting hits, we're getting crits, like we will get assists off of this. This is quite awkward. Nope, not gonna get it, that's okay. Rear gunner, you know what to do. If you want to know about the why the rear gunner's name Way, I will answer in the comments. I won't answer it now. Critical, we'll leave him. Because again, I want the teammates to get these crits and well, these kills. Because they need it more than I do. Common courtesy is actually quite uncommon in War Thunder right now. Okay, I didn't want to kill that one, but we've used all the Shraga. Yeah, we definitely need to RTB now because our engines are fucked. But, oh well. We'll be okay. P400's farming up a howitzer. Let's have a look at this player card so I can get a hint. Oh, he's playing Italy. Okay. Has he ever played Sweden? No, he's an Italian main. So I'm going to make a guess and say it's this. That's my guess. Let's RTB and then we can find out. Well, welcome to the hangar. End up leaving the match because um, the last guy was airfield camping. So I'm not going to waste my time with that. But that perfectly proves what that plane can do. Just as a pointer, one of the IL-2s that I crit did crash. So that did count as a fifth kill. But obviously, those are not player kills. So do not consider that match as an ace match. Overall though, I do think this plane is still fantastic to this day. That's for certain. And well, 
if you don't fancy flying a zero, but you want something a bit more unique in that sense for a premium, this thing might be worth a shot of actually getting.